Good evening, BookTube. This is Johnny. I don't think it's been 24 hours since I made a video, but I'm sitting here, as I usually am, and um, I know tomorrow night I won't be able to make a video, and Friday night I won't be making a video because tomorrow our daughter Beth and her husband Andy and the grandkids come back from their family reunion up north and Andy and Beth and the kids leave early Saturday morning because Andy has a business trip he has to go on uh, Monday next Monday so they got to drive all the way from here to Denver Colorado and then Monday, Andy goes off on a business trip. Andy works on dams. It's, it's He's a dam engineer and he has to fly somewhere. So tonight, uh, since I got nothing else to do, I'm tired. It's only 8.51 at night here in West Michigan. It is July the 11th. It's a Wednesday. And... Uh, I'm just kind of really don't know what to do with myself so I thought hey make a video because I'm always writing in my diary today I ended on page 541 for the year 2018 tomorrow is July the 11th 2018 I have a title already for my diary entry tomorrow for my online diary there was always there has always been a highly self-conscious colony of American dandies in exile so I might use that title today uh, I use the title our abiding immersion in silence did I use that one I think I used the one, what was it called? We are to discover stillness within. See, I'm always looking for, since I'm always writing in my online diary, I gotta find titles. Uh, and so when I'm reading something, I write down something that would be a good diary entry title. I thought about using those in my booktube videos, but in booktube you tend to have like Friday reads, Monday reads, book hauls, tags, and um, sometimes I put different titles like um, Sunday morning reflections or something else I get kind of tired of the same titles but I don't know what else to title my my videos I used that one the other night what was it uh, beer bottles are flying or Monday reads maybe that was kind of not really what the video was about but sometimes I, I just get titles because I like the imagery or the ideas behind the entry title to provoke thought or to expand consciousness or to make people aware of realities beyond their own little reality so yeah I'm sitting here I uh, thought I'd make a video I did get into this morning you know I've been having well I did mention a while back that I wouldn't get back to normal until all the visitation for, you know we had our son Josiah and his wife Hannah and little baby Marika with us and then a couple of days later we had our daughter Beth visit us with her husband Andy and her daughter little her little children Margaret well Louisa Margaret and Jack and so I probably won't find some kind of balance until like I said in the middle of July <laughs> well uh, next week 
is the Friends of the Library Used Book Sale. And I will help set up on Wednesday the 18th, set up for the used book sale. I got to be there at 9.30 at the library. And then we do a little bit on Thursday. Helps, you know, get the library, the, uh, Friends of the Library Used Book Sale set up. And then the 20th, I have to volunteer at the book nook but when it uh if you're friends of the library you get to go in an hour or before an hour earlier before the main public because friends of the library are people who pay for membership well since i volunteer at the book nook the library used bookstore i get a free membership and plus i always get in early because i help set up and i also help during the sale. So I'll go in on the 20th, I'll go in, look at the books, buy books, and then I'll open up the bookstore on the 20th at 10 o'clock. And then the 21st, I have to help at the used book sale. You know, I just help do things, or you know, I help people with their purchases or I put books on the table or you know, I do whatever they want me to do. I won't go Sunday, I don't think so. I might go in the morning when they open up just to... And then on the um, Monday is like the last, it ends at 12 and there's a bag sale, $5 for a bag. And then I have to help, uh, well Monday, I have to be there anyway on the 23rd because I volunteer at the book nook. So I got to be there at 10 o'clock on the 23rd anyway to open up the, the book nook, the library used bookstore. So hopefully I'll find some interesting books. I really don't need any books. I got so many books. As you've seen the lower level, it's a total chaos down there. And I'm always just getting more books. I do look forward to the Friends of the Library used book sale every year and you know if you can find one interesting book yeah, that's great. This morning like I said I've been kind of out of it but I did st read this morning a book that came to my mind the other day and I, I, I read these books over and over and over and over again because they're like books on uh, contemplation, uh, silence, spiritual awareness the first one i you know i bought these several years ago and i reread them and reread them and reread them like i said it's called and i've shown these in videos in the past when i do videos on christian spirituality into the silent land a guide to the christian practice of contemplation by martin lard and then he did a second book a sunlight absence Silence, Awareness, and Contemplation by Martin Lard. And this is the one that kept coming to my mind when I was interacting in my comments uh, with Vegematic uh, the other day. If you look at the, the last couple of videos, Vegematic, who has his own YouTube channel, check it out. He does political commentary. Uh, this book kept coming to my mind as I was going back and forth with him about how I experience reality. Also, I got out and read, this is one of the book I reread and reread and reread. I keep these by my desk in my main study and I look at them all the time. This is Orthodox Psychotherapy, The Science of the Fathers by Metropolitan of Narpakapis Hero Herotheus. This is like Eastern Orthodox spirituality. So I read those, and then I did get around to mowing the lawn today at around 10 o'clock. I did for about an hour and a half, did some trimming, watered my wildflowers. I caught two chipmunks. Well, I, I told you I caught a chipmunk yesterday, last night, and I set him free. And then I caught another one, and I, had, I drove over to a local church parking lot and set him free. So I've caught about eight or nine chipmunks. One summer, a couple of years ago, I caught 15 chipmunks in the chipmunk trap. <coughs> but we have to keep the population down. <laughs>
So after I read that, well then after I set the chipmunk free, I stopped at a local thrift store. I found this book called The Grand Tour. If you read uh, novels from the 19th century, maybe early 20th century, people would do a grand tour. They would go to Europe and they would visit Italy and they'd visit England and France and maybe Greece or Turkey. And this is what this is. It's these places that people in the 19th century would visit, like the Riviera, just, and they have little, uh, here's the Alps, the Swiss Alps, and people would visit like, uh, oh, like Venice, or, yeah, this is Venice. People in the 19th century, wealthy people, would have the Grand Tour and, uh, I just kind of, I read things like that. Here's a, they would visit Vienna on the Grand Tour. So I got that. And then I bought uh, the Gospel according to uh, Coco uh, Chanel. I have a biography of her. She was, uh, uh, says here, Delving into the long, extraordinary life of a renowned fashion, French fashion designer, uh, Coco, is it Cuckoo? I can't pronounce it. Chanel. Karen Kerbeau has written a new kind of book exploring Ch Chanel's philosophy on a range of universal themes from spy style to passion, from money, success to femininity, and living on her own terms. She was born in 1883 and the reason why I got this is, is because it covers some of the people found in the Children of the Sun, a narrative of decadence in England in eight, after 1918. Some of the people mentioned in here are mentioned in here so that's why I got it. Plus I have a biography of hers and it was only 50 cents. And then I bought John Fowle's novel, Daniel Martin. Uh, I wasn't sure if I had this. I have this, so I'll take it to the book nook Friday when I go, well, when I, probably Thursday, well, Wednesday when I go to set up the Friends of the Library used books down. I got that. Uh, last night I started reading Beauty and Sadness by this, the very famous Japanese writer, Hushura. Kabata. It says here, Beauty and Sadness is Nobel Prize winner Kaboto's last novel. At once lyrical and terrifying, it is a tale of passion told with the most unsettling dispassion. As the story opens, Oko Tush Tushuyu, a successful novelist in his middle years, is journaling nostalgically like nostalgically to Koto to hear the temple bells ring in the new year. He has a further purpose to see Otoko, Otokuo, his mistress of 24 years before. Now a painter, still very beautiful, she lives in the guest house of a temple with her protege Keto, an utterly passionate and amoral girl, barely 20. It is Kuto who, as the lives of these three run irresistibly together, will be the chief agent of destruction and a curious widening drama of revenge. Agonizingly erotic, yet as placid, placid on the surface as a still pool in the temple courtyard. Beauty and sadness is a testament to Kuo, 